women network marketers are in these countries like Saudi Arabia or nine. And five. Like yeah. Okay, well not to cut you off, but I just see that we are now recording. So let's officially say it's episode twelve. And tonight we're talking about gratitude. So if you want to say again what you just said, Karen, now that we're recording. Well, basically I just said that I was glad to be born in America and not in a country where um, women are treated as property. They can't drive, they can't vote, they can't go outside without, you know, their husband. Um, you know, they're always accused of things, well, not always, but if somebody suspects them of wrongdoing, that's it, you're guilty, you don't have a trial, you just assume that you're guilty of whatever they want to accuse you of. So, just got to be an American and have this freedom to not be controlled. Absolutely. <laughs> Anybody else want to go next? <laughs> Gratitude. Um, well, I'm also grateful to be an American. I'm also grateful I discovered Beachbody. And I know that when I get results in doing something, I feel more grateful. And actually, uh, gratitude turns into inspiration at that point when I get results from something. Working hard. And if I figure out a problem, if I make a mistake and I learn from it and I get a result later, Whatever way that the results come fills me with gratitude for that, and it turns me in, it turns into inspiration to scale up on what I was doing. So gratitude doubles as as inspiration, I guess, in a weird way too. Cool, that makes sense. And it's funny because I was just thinking when you said about being grateful for Beachbody, I'm definitely grateful for a couple different reasons though because as much as the programs have definitely changed my life and the Shakeology which I was very no la 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 about at first but now like there's no way now that I drink it every day that I will ever stop drinking it every day so I'm grateful for my health and my strength I'm getting a lot stronger because of it which I like but more than that even is the community of people that I've met. Like I definitely knew people beforehand, but my the amount of people and different people that I've met, including you guys, through Beach Body has really meant a lot to me because when I'm going through like I said before we were recording, I'm not feeling that great right now. But I know I have my community when I'm just like, you know what, I just and everybody lifts me up and that means more to me than even like the products or anything is the people connected to them so i'm grateful for you guys i love you guys mm, back at you <laughs> and i'm also grateful for the summits where we can at least hang out once a year yep we always have fun with those <laughs> And that's where I met Lisa. That's where I met Sylvia and Lisa. Yep. Thank you. Well, I was trying to segue into Lisa telling us what she's grateful for. Oh, I'm very grateful for meeting all of you at Summit. <laughs> oh, seriously, the, uh, the group that we have here and the way it's grown each time we've seen each other. I'm very grateful for that because I could have landed anywhere. Actually, Kelly could have landed anywhere. I landed with Kelly. Hmm. It could have been anywhere. Kelly is, I'm just, oh man, am I grateful for her. She is recording. I see it's recording. Yes. Right? Anyway, I am very, very grateful because the, she, she's been called to this. It's, it's a higher vision, it's a passion. And it's just amazing, it radiates out to everyone in her sphere. And I support her like crazy and have supported her in the past. And I thought, oh, I will support my sister-in-law. And I landed in this amazing place with incredible 
people who support, who share ideas, who uh, have a goal to have people using these. I, I am so grateful that I found and, and discovered this because it could have been anywhere. And yet it's with you guys. So thank you so much. I'm grateful to each and every one of you. I got you, Lisa. Love you, Lisa. Yeah, and I got to meet Karen this year. Yeah. We were roomies. <laughs> and had uh, trolley car adventures, so that was fun. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to see what Indianapolis brings this year. So, yeah, I'm going to see if you want to race the car. <laughs> New Orleans, so. Which is, I can't hear you, sweetie. I'm sorry. I'm glad I made it to New Orleans. Yeah, no, that was a lot of fun. I mean, the food was great. Um, just, you know, I just think it's a, a city, you know. So. It was fun, but I'm also grateful in the same vein for the training that we get because there's so much available to us for free and then even more depending on different beans you can make but what's given to us for free is so amazing and so helpful and you know you don't get thrown in and it's like we'll figure it out you know there are steps and then you can figure out how to make it your own along the path so I'm grateful for that because I wouldn't have had a clue you know where to start, so that's awesome. Also the upline, you know, willing to help and share. I'm not like, well, this is my secret and I'm not sharing. There's no really sense of competition. Everybody wants to help and empower everybody else. And I think the person on this call who shares the most training and stuff is Tom, for sure. Absolutely. So I'm grateful for Tom's trainings too. <laughs> Thanks. My my five minute potty break trainer is coming along nicely too. Oh good. Good good. <laughs> Be out before the end of the year, most likely before the end of the year, I think. Nice. Amethyst, what are you thankful for? It doesn't have to be a coaching thing. For all the blessings I have. Everything. That's awesome. Be thankful for great hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And kitty cats. I always see your whole mirror cat. They're so cute. Yes, and your cat. <laughs> there it is. I knew it was close by. He's such a sweetie. <laughs> I'm thankful for my big goofy yellow lab and my guinea pig, too. And of course, Dave and the kids. <laughs> but we we're talking about pets. <laughs> so, what's everybody doing this year? Anybody doing something out of the ordinary for Thanksgiving or just the usual? The usual minus one person. Yeah, as soon as I asked, I was like, sorry. No, it's okay. But no, never feel like you're uh, uh, tiptoeing around eggshells. It's fine. Okay. Can I share something with you? Of course. We have a family tradition in the house. It's usually Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, whenever we gather all together with whatever family we have and have a meal and we're thankful for things. And we have two toasts, not just one. The first toast would be Happy Thanksgiving or Merry Christmas. And the second toast, we raise our glasses and we toast to all of those who could not be with us here today. The ones who are at school, the ones who are living across country, the ones who've gone on. And it's like all of a sudden you can feel everybody gathered around the table with you. That's really neat. We do that every year. And I wanted to share that. We even, you know, we, we think of little Puffin and... Smoky and all of those who have gone before as well, mm -hmm. but it, it brings them back to the table during that celebration and you can feel them. They're right there and you know they've never left. That's a really neat tradition. Yeah, that's a good tradition. I dig it. And they probably are there in spirit. Don't know. Get around. Hey, 
Yes. It's wonderful that we have traditions like that. Absolutely. I did a whole uh, live video talking about Thanksgiving traditions. And one of the things I remember from growing up, because I don't know if there really were like 500 people at Thanksgiving dinner, or I was just little, so it seemed like there were 500. But <laughs> my grandma, my mom would set up tables through her whole house. She had one of those houses that was like you could walk around. The whole house. And my job was to make the name plates. And I used to love making the little name cards with the stickers and everything. And she would have what we call Thanksgiving pie, even though we have pie for dessert, but this was called the pie. And she'd buy everybody just a little present. And it had a ribbon attached to it with your name on it. And everybody would grab the ribbon. And at the same time, you'd all pull to get your present. But it would turn into a giant knot, like, floating over the table. And then we'd all be, like, trying to untie it. It was always a big laugh trying to find your present and the thing. Oh. And my mom kept that going for a while. It was really fun, like, just something unique that I remember from growing up. So I'm grateful for those memories. I don't have my grandparents here anymore, or, you know. I remember there's but the one, ever just, just real quick. I remember one year she got me and both of my brothers an Atari game. So this will tell you how long ago that was. And tied all three ribbons to the game. And so we're all fighting <laughs> like trying to get our present. It was so fun. I still have three Ataris. Do you are they twenty six hundreds? I got the twenty six hundred and I got a couple other ones. The one that only had like two colors and I haven't turned them on in 20, 30 years, but they probably still work. I don't know. They're just sitting there in a box. <laughs> you got to play Kaboom. That was the best. Kaboom. I remember that one. That had the little round uh, stick thing. The paddle. The paddle. Yeah, whatever. Paddle, paddle mm -hmm. yeah, that thing. I remember that. I got pretty good on that game. I could flip it because it wouldn't have the spot for the million, so you'd get the nine 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 nine, and it would flip. Wow. Way to go. <laughs> Way to go. Kaboom. <laughs> Frogger was another one of my favorites. Yep. We could do a lot with a square back in our day. <laughs> yeah, we could. <laughs> Too many buttons on these new controllers. I, I lost interest in gaming after the, after the original Nintendo. I just got out of it. No interest. Who else has a tradition? We might as well share Thanksgiving tradition since it's a couple days from now. We don't really have anything out of the ordinary when it comes to Thanksgiving. It's just a turkey dressing, all the trimmings, and a little bit of family. And that's it. Mm. Do you only have pumpkin pie, or do you have other kinds, too? Um, just pumpkin. That's it? That's it. You know, I make my pumpkin sugar free so I can eat it, mm. but then I make an apple pie, and this year I made peanut butter pie, too. Ooh, Ooh that sounds good. Yeah, I have a Shakeology every Thanksgiving, but I have a Shakeology every day anyway. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to have that. <laughs> did you know you can make Shakeology pie? Yes, I did. And I've also done Shakeology pumpkin pie, and I've done Shakeology uh, eggnog and nutmeg and all kinds of different holiday stuff. Got oh, all kinds that, of that's good. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just some, some canned organic pumpkin pie, no sugar, by the way, and a little bit of nutmeg and some cayenne pepper for some heat and some cinnamon powder and a chocolate shakeology blended up like you normally would and make it as thick as you want. Maybe throw some raw pecans in there, too. Mm. That sounds really good. Oh, it is good. It is, it is very good. But I think if I made a fourth pie for Thanksgiving, that would be silly, so I'd better wait till the day after. Mm. What about you, Lisa? Are you making pie? Well, my kids want me to make chest pie, which, you know, all the sugar you take out of your stuff, send it over here. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in moderation, you know. Good about it. You can make it with a pecan. You, you have to have that um, cake base. And you can make it with a butter pecan cake uh, mix. Or... You can change it and make, and use, say, chocolate or something in the bottom. And I would make it for Christmas 
and use uh, red velvet. So you put red velvet cake in it, and then you pour the stuff over on the top, and it kind of seeps, the red seeps through, and then you sprinkle green on it. And it looks really Christmassy. Huh. My gosh, it tastes so good. I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever had it. It's, it's amazing. I never had it till I moved down south. Oh, okay. The southern thing. thing. Cool. Well, you'll have to report back to us on how it turned out. Yeah, I'll probably have to make it this time. I wonder if I could... I wonder if... Well, here we go. I should probably take something like chess pie, which is the ultimate of sugar, cream, but just processed food stuff. I should try to find substitutes and make it and then do a training where I can show somebody how I can even make chess pie like that. Oh there you God. go. And that can be the beginning of maybe a weekly or a monthly thing where you take a traditional thing and make a healthier version and do a video showing how you do it. Gosh, I want to do this full time. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a holiday cooking challenge and have people, you know, join it and then everybody do this and share what they've come up with and take pictures of it and do little videos every day? Well, it's uh, Yay. it's about 30 days or whatever till Christmas, so there's plenty of time for that. There is. I'm not prepared. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Well, I have my holiday Barbie, so oh. I've, I've started. Holiday Barbie is the first Christmas present every year. And okay. it, it makes me so mad because when my, my daughter was born, I had a wonderful friend who took me to the hospital at 4 o'clock in the morning because my husband had to be doing something with the kids and dropping them off and stuff. She held my head while they put in the uh, whatever it was. I don't know. And she was, and she says, you know, such a beautiful little baby girl. You should, you should have a holiday Barbie for her first year. And I went a forty dollar doll in a box that you can't take out. No way. She said, oh, just for the year she was born. So in 1998, we got the holiday Barbie for her first Christmas. Then, of course, 1999 was the Millennium Doll. And, and 2000 was the turn of the century, and it was really special. And, like, when is that going to happen again, if ever? And then I had three of them. So I had three. So the big question was, do I continue or not? I had three. So, so now she is 19 years old, and I just bought my tiniest holiday Barbie. <laughs> And she's like, oh, creepy, take them out of my room. So they're all in my closet. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but if they're not open, then... I enjoy them more than she ever oh, I have no idea. But it's every year, the different hair, the different dresses, the change of fashion, the different people making them. It It's like seeing pictures of life flash by. Mm -hmm. It's really, really interesting. You know, the, all of a sudden she changed from looking like Debbie Reynolds to looking like Taylor Swift. It just, it's fascinating. <laughs> well, it's funny that you said that about pictures because that's one thing I am definitely thankful for. I take, I am loving our technology of today that you can take a picture whenever you want, pretty much. Yes. And, and you can see it right away. They don't have to be developed. Yes, yes. And a, like, and a video. Mm -hmm. Well, I got a digital camera before my son was born, and I became the mamarazzi. And I just, like, I think <laughs> I took a picture every time the child farted. Like, it didn't matter. I had my camera constantly with me. And I look back now, you know, he's 14, my daughter's 12, my oldest is 16, and just watching them grow through photographs. I'm so thankful all of those moments that I have. Isn't that amazing? And I make a collage every year for Dave for his birthday of pictures from the year before. So just even in my kitchen, you can just watch them grow. <laughs> you know, it's kind of cool. That's pretty neat. Yeah. 
We've got one picture from every, we, we started at JC Penney's and then we went when they started, they had the school pictures, then we had the cheer and the football pictures and they have a picture at six months, one year and each year, five by sevens and little frames on the wall, all the way up until graduation from high school. And their cap and gown is their last one. And then with Mara, we had a mother-daughter picture when she was just like three months old. Then one at five, 10, sweet 16. And my last one together will be when she turns 21. That's it's cool. Just, it's just, it is, and I know at some point in time, I'm going to be looking at them and go, how old was this? Or they fall off the wall and I forget which order they're in. I mean, that just means I'm old. I have to drink my Shakeology so that I can keep my mind sharp. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Did you want to add anything, Karen? Yeah, for the longest time, it was just my mom and I on Thanksgiving. My sister's in another state. And my dad's visit with, you know, his wife. <clears throat> so... And then, you know, sometimes I would spend it with my friend, but my friend passed away. So it's always kind of to have another friend that sometimes I would spend it with. So, you know, it's kind of always been different every year. So really no tradition. So. You have a tradition of being non-traditional. Yeah. So I know that sometimes my mom and I would just go out to eat a uh, buffet or something, you know, turkey. Yeah. And, you know, I'm okay not having turkey. Turkey's not my favorite thing. I mean, I would be just fine, you know, eating pizza or pasta, really. I mean, I love mashed potatoes. I'm, Pies are okay, you know. I think I'd rather have a dark chocolate candy bar or something, but um, not really a pie person. I could do pizza any day. That's my favorite pie, pizza pie. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's the thing, like, I don't think I would ever make a pumpkin pie for any other day. So it's kind of like, it's special because of that, but I wouldn't just be like, yay, hi, you know, like I'm not, I don't really eat dessert anyway anymore, but. Yeah, pumpkin, I don't. pumpkin soup is really good. My mom and I have it at this restaurant, but we were never able to replicate that recipe like the way they made it. But, you know, but it is a good soup, pumpkin soup. Again, that's one of those things that you only have at Thanksgiving. That's cool. Now we've pretty much kept the same menu with some tweaks because we found that we were making things every year because it was tradition, but that the people that were making them for had long since passed on, so no one was eating it because they were the only ones that liked it. But we were making it because it was Thanksgiving. We're like, this is stupid. So <laughs> the basic things have kept on, but growing up, we would have, um, you know, my dad is a minister and he would find people that didn't have somewhere to go or like homeless people or when the AIDS epidemic first came out, my dad started an AIDS ministry and he would have all of these people that were affected by that join us for dinner. So to me, that's really special when you're able to share with people that don't have somewhere to go. You know, like to me, that means more than the food or, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. I'm so thankful that I have enough to share with you when you're in need. You know, like to me, that that sets out really big in my mind. I thought that was cool. My aunt and uncle did that always when and gave food to um, people that couldn't really afford food. You know, go and donate food. I guess they go to their home. I think they did it within the church or something. And then they'd have people over. So always, you know, a generous giving family. 
both my aunt and uncle died, and then my cousin <coughs> passed away, and my brother, he um, had a stroke, stuck before my cousin passed away, but shortly after his mom passed away, and they said, do not resuscitate, but my cousin, my sister wanted to resuscitate him, so he did, but he needs care. But she was a caretaker for him, right? Camp work, each problem a minute, everything. And then she died. So now he's, you know, all his family is gone. Now my other cousin, you know, has moved in and is taking care of him. But it's kind of sad. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Do you have any usual traditions that you do, Amethyst, or are you just kind of the regular turkey and mashed potatoes? <laughs> just the norm, but my grandma used to make the best apple pie. I miss her apple pie. Aww. Mama doesn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Not the same, huh? No, she just buys the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma used to make everything from scratch, the dough and all. The, you know, the pie crust. Yep, I just made three crusts today, actually. So I hope they came out okay. I don't know what I'm doing. I just kind of make it up as I go along. <laughs> well, I'm getting hungry. I haven't had dinner yet. <laughs> Making you hungry talking about all this food. <laughs> yeah, and the girl that's cooking. I'm gonna go to her aunt. She um, made the homemade gravy, fill the stove in it, and make the broth. And I mean, let it sit for two or three days, and then thicken it. It's like this is gravy that takes three days to make. I'm like, wow. can't wait to try it. I mean, I'm telling you, there's no portion control is gonna go out the roof. Somebody <laughs> <laughs> could take. Three days to make gravy. I'm not going to say, oh, I could only have this much. <laughs> no, and that's the thing. One day is not going to make or break what you're doing if you're on track the rest of the time, you know. And um, she's from Napa, right? And so, anyway, she said there's plenty of wine, but she goes, down in LA, though, she goes, they don't drink as much wine as like they do up in Napa. She goes, what I have for LA is plenty, but if it was in Napa, it wouldn't be enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's wine country. Oh. What was that? Did you guys hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I thought we were going to have a sing-along there for a second. It was like, dung. <laughs> oh, we have four and a half minutes left. If anybody wants to share anything else that they are thankful for. I'm thankful for, thankful for my taste buds. For what? Thankful for my taste buds. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm thankful that I don't have any food allergies. I'm not, you know, allergic to gluten or dairy or, um, you know, I don't have any food restrictions, really. Um, That's good. I'm allergic to a couple of different things, but nothing that affects my day to day. So I'm thankful for that. <coughs> I'm thankful that I'm 40 and not balding so far. <laughs> Even if you were, you'd have a great comb over. No, I wouldn't. I'd shave my head bald and I'd buy a wig. You're not going to do the hair <laughs> turban? No. Does the technology help with hair growth? The it's speed of it, I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna prevent like the hair loss. If a guy is gonna lose his hair, he's gonna lose it. But certainly the speed of the growth, yeah, sure. I have a friend who's fifty. He's got a full head of hair. His hair's all the way down to his waist. Wow, yeah. nice. cool. 
That's going to be my brother because he's 46 now and has hair down to his butt. But my younger brother went bald. So even the same DNA. Wow. Which is wow. really funny because my older brother is an inch shorter than my younger brother. And my younger brother used to tease him about it. And now my older brother says, see what that inch closer to the sun got? Yeah, you fried all your hair off him. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> so what about your grandfather on your mom's side? What was his head of hair like? He was not bald. Okay. And that's I know just... they say that's the thing. Like he kind of, when he was really old, had kind of this going on, but he still had it on top. Right. Hmm. So. Well, my husband's mother's family, it all looks like a cookie cutter came down and cut the and middle of They all are exactly the same bald, all of them. And Pete lost his hair, I think, out of high school. Oh. And yeah, he's still a gorgeous man. But if he starts sprouting more feathers, I'll let you know. I'm making him drink that Shakeology every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But he had the amazing hair in high school. You see the pictures, and it's that pompadour, and it was naturally curly, just like that old 50s style. <laughs> but, uh, no matter what top of your head, those eyes, uh, they get me. I think she's thankful for her husband still. Um, yeah. and you know something? I should be thankful for him more often. Every day. And I should tell myself that more often. And tell and him that, too. And tell him too. I should. In fact, Every I'll do day. that right after finish here. Yep. It's important, believe me. It can make or break a relationship because when people don't feel appreciated, it snowballs. So. I'm grateful for all the new coaches and customers we're going to get this year. Yes, me too. And add to our teams. And next year. And next year. Yep. Absolutely. We got room for more. Come join us. Ew. We're fun. <laughs> Who wants to wrap it up? I wasn't going to intro and I've been kind of guiding this whole so I'm gonna say nut it somebody take this out go ahead Lisa is that milk you're drinking it looks white no that's the label on this oh the label oh so you're uh, rubbing